about junipers because they came from their original idea uh, in developing the router was that they would have they would do everything in hardware at line speed super fast and so to do that um, they really have a lot more ASICs in their devices uh, and a lot more separation between the operating system and the forwarding plane than uh, than Cisco has. Now this being a J-series device, like I said, everything's in software. It doesn't really have any ASICs. But in the bigger routers, that is not the case. In the bigger routers, there is a there is ASICs, and those ASICs control forwarding uh, and other things. And you'll notice that in Juno S, there is a difference between the forwarding plane and the route processor. So, for instance, I'm going to run another command here, show chassis forwarding, and you'll see that it's got, it uses the concept of microkernels, you'll see what's going on on the forwarding uh, uh, process. Now this is the process that actually forwards packets. Now in Junos you have basically the routing engine which is Funny enough, not actually what routes packets. The routing engine includes the OS interface that you're seeing now, the CLI and the web interface, and it includes all the things that have nothing to do with, you know, the configuration editor, everything that has nothing to do with forwarding packets. So this whole part of the OS could crash, and it would just forward packets right along happily. Now, in the bigger models, which is their bread and butter, what their initial idea was, the M series, the T series, things like that, this is actually a hardware separation between the routing engine and the forwarding engine. Two separate hardware blades, so to speak. Different chips. So that really makes the device very stable because you can input a configuration and then when you submit the, the configuration it compiles it into like a machine type code, a compiled state that it can then put on the actual forwarding uh, device and that will run it at line speed very fast, which is a big difference for Cisco's way of implementing it. Now, so you see, you can, you know, see the different things here. Now, Juniper has something called a PIC, a physical interface card, and an FPC, a flexible PIC concentrator. You see them here, this is the FPC, and this is the PIC. Now, the PIC is actually the card, if I do show chassis PIC, I'll start from that. The PIC is actually where the interfaces are. And we're going to do the pick slot, zero. And then we're going to do the FPC slot, which is also zero in this box. And you see basically the interfaces that it has, two fast Ethernet and two T1s. You see the pick version. And you see the RAM size, the memory heap, all that good stuff. Now, the interesting thing like I said there is a separation and if you take if you look inside this router which I'll show you in another video the pick is like a separate motherboard that has a jumper cable that goes over to the main motherboard and even on this box it is separate so I could do stuff like actually reboot just the pick which is which which includes the pick is like the card that slides in that has the interfaces then there's a flexible pick concentrator which holds multiple picks now this being a small device it doesn't have uh, it only has one FPC slot, but if it was a bigger device like the M series, it would have multiple FPC slots, and also some of the J series, the larger ones, have more than one PIC slot. So the PIC is the interface, and the FPC holds the PICs. So you can do show chassis FPC, and let's see what we have here. We can do enter is a valid command you can see that it's online and I can actually reboot like I said just that you see it's got its own memory 32 megs on it I have if you if you do show system see look at all those commands here but I believe there is a show system we're gonna go down a little bit and we're gonna look at memory this is an interesting command you can see the memory buckets requests you can see USB devices that are attached, different things. But this device actually has 768 megs of uh, DDR400 for the actual OS, but the actual interface is different. This really shows you the difference between Cisco and uh, Juniper, that there is a separation between the OS and what it runs, and the compiled configuration that it puts on, on the actual uh, 
device that it puts on the actual interface controller, so to speak. In Cisco, if the iOS crashes, I mean, that's gone. It's not going to work. You're basically screwed. With Juniper, I mean, you could really have a situation where you have something wrong with the route engine, which is where you log in, and let's say the device is pretty much, for all intents and purposes, down, but the forwarding uh, uh, piece of hardware is still up and running and forwarding packets. So it, it really leads to some interesting, interesting situations. And you can really see here the... Uh, how this could impact uptime and availability on this device. Big time. Big time. Now, I want to kind of take a look here. We're going to go back to uh, to the show command. We're going to clear that out. I really want to show you the edit command, which is how you actually edit uh, the configuration. So, in Junos, the configuration is not edited. Like in Cisco, you would put um, config terminal, config T. And as you actually put the lines in, they are going into the Cisco device one line at a time. And if you screw up, you could really screw yourself. With Juniper, that's not the case. What it has is a, it has a configuration template that you fill out, okay? And this configuration template is utilized to input all your commands. You can view it once you have all the commands in your proposed configuration. Then you can commit the configuration all at once. And when you commit the configuration, then it makes your changes, not a second before, and it makes them all at once. And it'll actually check your commands for sanity line by line as you type them. And before you do the commit, it'll also check them for sanity. So there's multiple levels of configuration checks and balances there. The nice thing is that you can spend all day, for instance, working on a configuration. And then if your maintenance window is at 2 a.m., you can actually co have it automatically commit the configuration at 2 a.m. and roll back off of it if the configuration does not work. So a lot of flexibility there, stuff that Cisco really isn't doing right now. You can see the heritage in where the device comes from, why it's you know totally kicking ass in the service provider you know core Internet backbone provider space and why Cisco really got their butts kicked there and I'm really impressed with the operating system I think it's very easy for you to get used to if you're used to Cisco instead of show IP route show IP BGP show IP this show IP that you just leave out the IP because it's only does IP so show BGP for instance there's your commands BGP neighbor BGP is not running show route there's your commands right there. Now, I don't have any IPs configured, so I don't have a full routing table here. In a minute, we're going to go through and add some basic configuration so you can sort of see how the configuration looks, how you submit the commands, and how it's organized. At first, it looks a little daunting, but I think you'll find it quite easy after a while, and it actually starts to make sense in a weird sort of way. So let's move right along to that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go into the candidate configuration, which is the proposed configuration. You'll see that now the root changes to root with a pound sign or hash sign, however you want to call it, and the edit symbol is also above that. This is like config T mode on Cisco. Now, here I'm going to show you the current configuration. When you go into edit mode, it copies your running configuration to the candidate configuration, okay? So right now, what is in here is exactly what's running on the device. So what I'm going to do is go in here, and I'm going to show you what a Juniper uh, Junos configuration looks like. And you don't have to type configuration, because you're already in the configuration. Say syntax error. All you have to type is show and you'll get right in. So now you're going to see last change by, it's going to show you the actual system version. Now this is the system section. There's a couple sections that are at the top level. You'll see you have the system, you have the auto installation. This is because it's the first time we've set it up. It tells you you have to delete that. We're not going to worry about that right now. You see you have the services section, you have the root authentication section which is your root password for the box. Uh, you can see you have interfaces here uh, showing you this is the interface that the web management's running on. You go down a little farther, services, HTTP 